waterless places seeking rest. I'm not finding any. It says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it swept and put in order. Verses 26. Then it goes and takes along seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they go in and live there. And the last state of that man becomes worse than the first. I think you understand it. Am I communicating? How many times have we read in the media the background of those serial killers that they had been receiving psychiatric treatment in one rehab or another in the country? And when they are certified safe to live with society, they are discharged. But no sooner they are let loose with places going to scientific feet in medical science. They are repossessed with more vicious evil entities. And they end up spraying bullets into innocent fellow human beings with their families. As we saw recently in the cinema auditorium, families watching movies on house. Or what do we have to say? For those possessed, well-dressed lunatics who prefer to go and wait in front of colleges and schools, with a devilish purpose of spraying innocent children with bullets as they are running out of the college gates. Where is safe today in America or the whole world? I am sure we now understand or can figure out what happened to the remaining nine lepers as we read in Luke 17, 14 to 19. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go! Show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, said, Were well, there not ten cleansed? But we are denied. There are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger. In verse 19, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Amen. Jesus said to one leper, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole, meaning you are permanently healed. May God Almighty this day heal us permanently, and grant us the grace that we should not go back into the world we have left behind us so that we will not be repossessed by serving more extra devils. Amen. 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 We often see multiple miracles being performed simultaneously. What do I mean by that? That these miracles that have been performed all at the same time on religious programs on television or when we happen to attend a public crusade, the blind will see at the same time cancer goes out of the breast of another. While somebody is shouting, I can walk, I can walk. <laughs> and are these simultaneous miracles also of God and evidence of true discipleship? No one can really argue that philosophically, based on human wisdom, some may even quote the Bible to support the use of occultic powers to perform miracles when the disciples compared <coughs> or complained to him that some unbelievers were performing miracles in his name. And hear what the master said in Luke 9, 49-50. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, but he followed not because he followed not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. And what do you say about this word of wisdom from the Lord? This is one of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Some are destined to be saved. And from where can that salvation come? 
I want you to follow it. A big question indeed. A brother told me a story of a devout Muslim who had only one son, but the son was blind from birth. When the boy grew up, he heard from his friends that a big crusade was coming to town with expectation of miracles. The boy told his Muslim father, Father, take me to this man of God that I may receive my sight. And the father laughed him to scorn like many of us had done in the past. The crusade was to last seven days and each day the boy became desperate, would not eat and miserable because his father refused to grant him his wishes. When it was the sixth day, the boy gave the father an ultimatum. Either you take me there or I kill myself. As his only son, he has no choice but decided to prove his son wrong. So he embarked on the day's journey to town and got there on the last day of the crusade. Praise and worship songs were playing silently in the background. The voice of the man of God was heard all over the loudspeakers, calling everyone to shout hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah three times, and raise up their voices in supplication to Jesus Christ as he was about to touch them and welcome them into his throne of grace. The poor blind Muslim boy too shouted like the blind bat mules. Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. As we read in Luke 18, 37 to 39, and they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Verses 41 to 43. Saying, What we thou that I should do unto you? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith has saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, what did the blind Matthew do after receiving his flight or his sight? He followed Jesus. When the blind Muslim boy told his father, Father, I can see your face with your long beard. And red scarf over your shoulder. Amen. Amen. He could not believe it. And asked his son, Then what am I holding in my hand? And the boy said, A rosary. They call this bill in Islam. And a book, but certainly not the Bible. Oh my God. The father shouted, God is great. Three times in Arabic. And waded his way through the multitude to the center of the state with his son and told the man of God, Make me a Christian of my son! Make me a Christian of my son! Wow! Hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah! The Lord is great! All the time! All the time! Now, what are the moral lessons here? In view of all the discussions we have been having in favor and against above, we have one. Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him because he followed not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. Like the Muslim leader and his son, and obviously all his families and friends back at home in the village. If the miracle had not happened, the name of Christ Jesus would have been mocked back in the village. But Jesus turned their mockery into total conversion to the Christian God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We only heard about the Muslim family. And what about what happened to every individual within the multitude? Some went home, rejoicing and surrendering their lives totally to Christ. While some went home, with admiration for all miracles performed, with a spirit of unbelief, because to them 
it is magic. Three, some we are not suffering from any physical disabilities, but diseases of the mind, which any medicine cannot cure, except the power of prayer. They went home fully recovered, and their lives were never the same again. And four, some went there only to study the man of God, how he was able to pull such a multitude of miracle seekers. And all the time, when the praise and worship team were praising God, cries of people and voices were raised to heaven in prayer. Their own eyes were busy guessing how many in the crowd were just dropping offerings. While their brain were calculating how many millions of dollars will be harvested for such a successful crusade. <laughs> to them, will such a man not quickly run and seek the money powers to perform miracles and organize crusade too? <laughs> we have them today, all around us, establishing universities with their loot and riding limousines and flying about in executive jets with Omega wristwatch and a big golden crucifix dangling around their neck. <laughs> And before they utter two sentences, they proclaim, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord alive. Why will Jesus not be Lord when the double layer mattresses on which they are sleeping are stuffed with dollars, <laughs> donated by orphans, widows, and the sick in sight of deliverance? Amen. God have mercy. Amen. Where do we go from here? Christian believers. How did the Lord explain all the above business of the kingdom of heaven? Let us read what he said the kingdom of heaven is like in the parable of the sower. Matthew 13, 24 to 30. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tiles among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tars also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, is not now so good seed in thy faith? From whence then came it tars? He said unto them, An enemy had done this. The servant said unto him, Without them let that we go and gather them up. But he said, Nay, nay, lest why ye gather up the tars, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together unto the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather you together first the tars, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. What are we to learn from the above parable? He answered and said unto them, He that sweat the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the children of the kingdom. For the thirsts are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the thirsts are gathered and burned into the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who had ears to hear? Let him hear. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Some of the disciples were also baffled and asked in Luke, 1324. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many I say unto you, we seek to enter in, and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up, and I shut the door, and begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying lord lord open unto us and it shall answer them and say unto them i know you not whence ye came Amen. on the last days 
the Lord Himself will identify the wolves in sheep's clothing. Even though while on earth they were hero worship and held in high esteem, because men see through the physical appearances, while the Lord sees through the hearts of all calling on Him, the Lord, Lord. I'm publicly proclaiming Jesus is Lord, while their hearts are far from God. In Matthew 7, 21 to 28, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have you not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that were iniquity, my fellow believer Christians. Our Lord is hereby warning us about false prophets and glorified fools calling themselves servants of God, scattered all over the country in search of sheep of whom they will be feeding. We must remain steadfast in our faith and be prayerful and watchful so that we too may not enter into their trap. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Amen. Shall tribulation no. or distress no. or persecution no. or famine no. or nakedness no. or peril no. or sorrow? For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor height, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. May God bless you all. Amen. Let us pray this. With gratitude to God, we turn to you, O Lord our Father, to receive spiritual guidance, communication, and direction. In the quietness of our right mind, the place within us where our minds are joined as one, we listen to your voice of wisdom and truth, and we know what to do. Dear God, your understanding and spiritual guidance fills our hearts and minds completely. Your guiding Holy Spirit directs our every step, in all that we do, we acknowledge your holy presence and give you thanks for the wisdom, for the strength and serenity you give us. As we feel and experience your constant presence in our life, God, we joyfully receive your communication, insight and inspiration, gently guiding us on our path and making our way sure. Your loving Holy Spirit, dear Father, is the guiding light that illuminates our path. Your voice within us gives us the understanding, the insight, and spiritual guidance we need to make wise and compassionate decisions. You, dear Father, are our final source of peace, love, and wisdom. Your Holy Spirit guides and directs us. Your love enfolds us, and your light illuminates us. We are eternally grateful for your spiritual guidance, dear Father. Thank you for always being with us. We pray in Jesus' name, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May God bless you all. Thank okay. you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Altar call, hallelujah.